Hi, I'm Dylan Mendoza. Welcome back to part 3, Mathematics, paper 3H from November 2007. So let's get back into it. So in 18A, you're being asked to write the upper bound of the mass of the case. And the mass of the case is 68 kgs. Correct it to two significant figures. Now if you think about these two significant figures, that means that it could have either been 68.4999999, rounded down, or 68.5, you can write 68.499 as 68.5, could have been 68.5 rounded down, or 67.5 rounded up, right? So this is the lower bound, and this is the upper bound. Now a simple way of finding the lower and upper bound is to just simply take a uh, you see it's, it's two significant figures, so it's 68, so this is the second significant figure. You take this place, meaning this is the ones place, so you take that place, and you divide it by 2, and to find the upper bound, you add that number to the 68. So basically, since this is the ones place, you do 1, divided by 2, you get 0 0.5. Now to find the upper bound, you add 0 0.5 to 68, so you get 68.5. And if you wanted to find the lower bound, you do 68 minus 0 0.5. But in this case, you want the upper bound, so you just add 0 0.5, and you get 68.5 as the upper bound. Okay, so in 18b, they're asking, find the greatest number of crates that the cra cases that the crane could safely load, safely lift in one load. And they say that the crane can safely lift 1,200 kgs. Okay, so now, normally, if we were to find... Uh, the number of the amount the crane could lift, we would just do 1,200 divided by 68. However, the key word is the greatest amount, safely. Safely is a key word because it just means that they want the lower bound of the amount of crates it can carry. Because the lower bound is a safe amount. Because if you go to the upper bound, it's like it's going over the limit. But lower bound is below the limit and like it's safe. So to find the lower bound when dividing, you just do the lower bound of the, the numerator, basically, divided by the upper bound of the, in the denominator. So the lower bound has to be the numerator and the upper bound has to be the denominator. This is to get the lower bound of the division. So what you do is you find uh, the lower bound of the mass the crane can lift in one load. It's 1,200. The lower bound of that would be 1,150. Uh, and uh, you find the upper bound of th the weight of each crate, each, the mass of each crate, and it's just 68.5. And all you do is divide it, and you'll get an answer of 16.8. And to make it safe, since the word is safely, you have to round it down to 16, since you can't have 16.8 crates, you can only have... 16 or 17, and 16 is more safe. Uh, that question was a lot more common sense. Like, like it's just, it's a bit vague, but like, if you want, you can look at Khan Academy. He explains upper bounds and lower bounds really well. Well, for question 19, you're being told that P is proportional to W. And 19A is asking you to find a formula for P in terms of W. So when something is proportional to something else, in this case P to W cubed, it means that P is equal to a constant times W cubed. Whatever that constant could be. It could be 1, 2, 3. It could be anything. It could, it could be any number. So they've given us values of P when, uh, and W. So this can help us find the K. So P is 300 when W is 12. So K times uh, 12 cubed. Right? So K is nothing but... Uh, 300 divided by 12 cubed, which is uh, 300 over 1728, which is nothing but uh, 25 over 144. Uh, so now that we know that what k is, we can just substitute it into this equation, right? And, sorry, we can substitute it into this equation. And basically, what we get is P is equal to 25 over 144 times W cubed. And this is our formula for P in terms of W.
Okay, so basically we have this formula, P is equal to 25 over 144 W cubed. And 19B is asking, calculate the value of w, uh, P, of P, sorry, P is question mark, when W is, se sorry, 7.5. So all we do is substitute this W value into this original equation. So we get P is equal to 25 over 144 times 7.5 cubed. And so we get an answer of P being equal to uh, 73.2. And this is correct to three significant figures. And just use your calculator again. It's very simple to use. And yeah. Okay, so the next question, 19C, it's saying that when the wind speed is X, the wind turbine generates twice as much power as it does when the wind speed is 10. So calculate a value for X. So that means when the wind speed is equal to 10, the power generated is equal to Yeah, this is the equation. So the power generated is uh, 174, and this is correct to uh, three significant figures. So when the wind speed is x, the power generated, when it's this, this power is twice as much. So it means it's, instead of 174, it's 174 times 2, which is equal to 348. So the power is 348 when the wind speed is x. So now we know what the power is when the wind speed is x. So basically, we substitute it back into the original equation. So 348 is equal to 25 over 144 times w. Actually, we call it x because that's its wind speed times x cubed. So, so now we just basically solve for x. So we multiply both sides by 144. So we get 348 times 144 is equal to 25x cubed. Uh, then divide both sides by 25. So we say x cubed is equal to 348 times 144 divided by 25. So x cubed is equal to 2004.48. Now we cube root both sides to get x alone. So what we get is x is equal to cube root of 2004.48, which is just 12.6, and this is corrected to three significant figures, and that's the wind speed. Okay, you're asked in 20a to expand 1 plus root 3 squared, giving your answer in the form a plus b root 3, where a and b are integers. Now, I want to make this clear. 1 plus root 3 squared is not 1 squared plus root 3 squared. It's not that simple. It's 1 plus root 3 the whole squared, which means it's 1 plus root 3 multiplied by 1 plus root 3. So now you can use your FOIL, and that's just basically multiplying each integer by this, and then taking this and multiplying this. So you multiply each individual term by each individual term, and basically what you get is 1 multiplied by 1, which is 1, plus 1 multiplied by root 3 is root 3, plus root 3 multiplied by 1 gives you root 3, plus root 3 multiplied by root 3 is nothing but 3. So you get 1 plus 3, which is 4, and root 3 plus root 3, so 1 root 3 plus 1 root 3, you just need to add these together. So you just get 4 plus 2 root 3. And basically you give it in their form, where A is 4, B is 2, and there's your root 3 also. Okay, in 20b, you're basically being asked to find x. Uh, pr, sorry. And we'll call it pr x. And we have to give our answer as a third, which is just that 1 plus root 3 or root in the form of a root instead of like writing them in decimals. So to solve this, you need to know the cosine rule. Now, the cosine rule is nothing but a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of a. Now, a is the angle. And A should be opposite to this A squared. So the angle we have is 60. We have the two sides, 1 plus root 3 and 2. All we need to find is A squared. And A squared is X, so X squared. So now let's just substitute the numbers in. So X squared is equal to B squared, which is 1 plus root 3 squared, plus C squared, which is 2 squared, minus 2 times... 1 plus root 3 times uh, 
sorry, times 2 cosine of A, which is 60. Okay, so now simply you just solve it. So x squared is equal to 1 plus root 3 squared. We solved in the previous question. It simplifies to 4 plus 2 root 3 plus 4. 2 squared becomes 4. Min my, uh, minus 2 times 1 plus root 3 times 2 is 2 plus 2 root 3 times cosine of 60. Sorry, but I don't have any space. Now, oh. Uh, so now x squared is equal to 4 plus 2 root 3 minus 4, 4 plus 4 is 8 plus 2 root 3 minus 2 times 2 plus 2 root 3. Cosine 60, as you should know, is, pro is a half. If you put in your calculator, cosine, time, cosine 60, it's a half. So that's what it becomes. Now plus 2 and minus 2 cancel out to give you minus 1. So it becomes x squared is equal to 8 plus 2 root 3 minus 2 because I'm doing I'm now expanding this bracket so it becomes minus 2 minus 2 root 3 now what happens is minus 2 root 3 and plus 2 root 3 cancel so that becomes x squared is equal to 8 minus 2 which is equal to 6 so now we square root both sides to get a value for x so x is equal to root 6 and leave it in this form because this is third form. Okay, so for question 21, they're given, uh, you're, set, you're saying that a coin is biased, so that the probability it shows heads is P, and the coin is thrown twice. And they're asking you to show this quadratic equation is true, and you're saying, you, you're also been given that the probability that it throws heads exactly once in the two throws is 8 out of 25. So basically, the probability of throwing heads is equal to P. So now, naturally, but with our discussion of probability, the probability of throwing tails should be 1 minus p, since all probabilities add up to 1. Okay, so now with that out of the way, the only ways you can throw head once in two throws is if you throw heads first and then tails on the second throw, or if you throw tails first, then heads on the second throw. So if you get the total probability of this, you add it to the total probability of this, you should get 8 out of 25. So the probability of throwing heads first than tails is equal to P times 1 minus P. You should understand this from the previous dealings with probability. And this simplifies to P minus P squared. And the same thing is for this, but it's 1 minus P times P. And this simplifies again to P minus P squared. Now if you add these two probabilities, so P minus P squared plus p minus p squared this should be equal to the probability of throwing heads exactly once in the two throws which is 8 out of 25 so now let's simplify the left hand side p plus p gives you 2p and minus p squared minus p squared gives you negative 2p squared plus 2p is equal to 8 out of 25 now multiply both sides by 25 you get negative 50p squared plus 50p is equal to 8. So then you subtract 8 from both sides, you get negative 50p squared plus 50p minus 8 is equal to 0. Now we got to get it in terms of 25p squared. So to get it to 25p squared, we got to divide the whole equation by negative 2. So negative 50p squared divided by negative 2 is just 25p squared. 50p divided by negative 2 is negative 25p. And negative 8 divided by negative 2 is positive 4 is equal to 0. So you've proved this to be correct. Okay, so that was the last question and you're finally done with paper 3H from November 2007. So please comment, rate, subscribe and if you have any questions feel free to ask and please watch more videos. I really recommend the use of the doing of past papers because it really helps you in your exams like it really helped me. So thanks a lot and